the What I Be project initiated with one image and has evolved to several images from across the world from different individuals. Stay with us to learn more about Stephen Rosefield and his project, the What I Be project. Welcome to another episode of In The Studio. My name is Jocelyn Lua and I'll be your host. When I first read about Steve Rosefield, I was thrilled because uh, today's society, it is difficult to find images around the internet or social media platforms in which encourage individuals to be um, different, unique and imperfect. So today we're gonna be talking with Steve Rosenfield, who is a photographer and he will be telling us about his story and his project, The What I Be Project. Welcome Steve. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Can you start off by you know, telling us about yourself, you know, where you were born, other information that you want to share with us? Totally. Um, so I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. And I you know, moved here probably about 10 years ago. I moved to Davis, California. And you know, I currently live in Sacramento. Oh, great. What did you do in Boston before you came you know, to Davis? What he, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was a network administrator. I worked for uh, um, a computer company wow. for about 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I got to the point where I just didn't want to be in the corporate world anymore and mm -hmm. took a few years off and started rock climbing and traveling just to, you know, rock climb and, and really kind of learn who I was and what I wanted to do. So if you were like traveling and rock climbing around, you know, the world, what made you decide to settle like, you know, in Davis or the Sacramento area? It's kind of a crazy, uh, crazy. <laughs> place to settle when you've yeah. traveled. Um, but, you know, I just, I, I was in California mm -hmm. uh, climbing and I came up to Davis to visit a friend. He was going to UC Davis and um, I was here for a week and just fell in love with it. So I flew back home and probably about two months later, I just packed up my car and drove out to Davis. Yeah, I definitely understand you because, you know, I'm a student here in Davis, so as an undergrad, I fell in love with this campus. So I want to ask you, how did you get into photography? Like, how did it all start, you know, since you were in business before, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so. um, it all started basically, uh, you know, when I was climbing. Um, mm -hmm. I met a friend in France, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were in, in France and Switzerland. And um, he's also actually lives in Davis now as well. Wow. Uh, which is kind of a coincidence, but um, <laughs> great photographer. His name uh, is Boz, and mm -hmm. um, he just really got me excited on uh, taking pictures. You know, I would see his pictures of people climbing and just uh, really inspired me. So, you know, I went home um, after my trip and kind of bought my first camera and mm -hmm. just started shooting as a hobby. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with it. And that, that kind of started me down the path of, you know, taking pictures and mm -hmm. Um, so we have a picture, like, I believe this was one of your first pictures or images that you took is of the rock climbing is displayed right now. Yep, Can that you? was uh, actually in Squamish, British Columbia. It was mm -hmm. one of my first climbing trips um, to Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was when I pretty much first started to take pictures of rock climbing. Pretty cool. Was it like scary, you know, being from different heights or anything? No, I mean, for the most part, I was a, a big boulder, which is, mm -hmm. you know, climbing up yeah. certain height um you know it's not really climbing with ropes it's climbing without so why did you decide taking to start taking pictures of insects as well like butterflies you see right now i mean <laughs> i would take pictures of everything, everything. from ketchup bottles yeah. to <laughs> plants to yeah. you know butterflies but butterflies are beautiful and um you know mm -hmm. with all the different colors and different things mm -hmm. like that um a big um color photographer i like taking pictures of colorful things mm -hmm. and really vibrant so then Another project that you did along the way was photograph different bands and musicians. In my yeah, life. yeah. I, um, I went to a, a concert, um, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Franti and Spearhead, which oh. <laughs> actually is from Davis as well. Yeah. Um, Davis. Yeah. See, I was meant to be in Davis, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just started photographing um, Michael Franti, and it's kind of what got me really passionate about photography. Mm -hmm. um, and I just you know, continually reached out to other bands, you know, like Dispatch yeah. or Trevor Hall and, um, you know, 
different festivals and, and started photographing, you know, more bands. And, and that's kind of what started me yeah. getting heavily involved in photography. And how do you go about selecting your angles and, you know, different shots? Um, <laughs> basically, just by what I see and, yeah. you know, what, what kind of moves me. And, you know, I'm just trying to tell a story. And mm -hmm. the best way for me to do that is just you know, go by what I see. You know, yeah. I don't really follow the rule of thirds uh, when it comes to photography. But so you like to tell stories throughout your work. Yeah, yeah. totally. I, wa great. I want to bring um, the emotion that I'm seeing to people who weren't able to be mm -hmm. there. Makes sense. That's kind of my goal. And um, you've also done portraits and, I mean, currently do you have like a studio or no, I, I do all on location on shooting. Locations. I'm not a big um, yeah. studio photographer. I don't, I don't like shooting indoors and yeah. using modified light and different things like that. So can you tell us a little bit about the images? You said she is also from Davis, the one that's currently displayed. Yep. That's Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, I met her at the rock climbing gym. She also worked mm -hmm. there and she's a Davis uh, local. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you, uh, what I like about your photography is that you take pictures of everything and it's not discriminating or anything, like mm -hmm. it's everything. So that's something that I was like, even from like age, gender, from like all, you know, ranges. So that's something that I really like. Thanks. Yeah. And can you tell us more about the images? Yeah, that I mean, are being um, you know, I, it, it varies. Um, you know, I've taken images of weddings and, you know, um, friends, children, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and high school senior portraits, and, um, yeah, I just, I just, it's, it's basically by word of mouth, yeah. you know, I don't really market myself as a senior portrait photographer, I've never put an ad anywhere, I've never put mm -hmm. an ad for a wedding, or, yeah. it's basically by word of mouth, and, and I like to keep it more organic like that, and, and it kind of keeps the same type of people coming, mm -hmm. um, rather than difficult people, and, and stuff like that, yeah, yeah. So now I want to talk about the What I Be project sure. is what you're mostly known for, mm -hmm. right? And I want to ask you, how did it all start? Like, where did it begin? What was the inspiration behind it? You know? Yeah. Um, you know, basically, um, I kind of, I, I kind of had this thing in my life, you know, 10 years ago, uh, where... I was really materialistic and, you know, really opinionated and, you know, I would just always have to share my opinions um, and it never really made me happy. It never really made other people happy. You know, it was something that I would always deny when people said, you know, you're opinionated. Yeah. Um, nobody ever wants to be told that they're opinionated. You know, I was very defensive mm -hmm. and, you know, I came to the point where, you know, four or five of my friends would tell me I'm, I'm opinionated and uh, it pretty much set in that it was probably true. Yeah. You know, so I kind of um, embarked on this journey where, you know, I noticed in my life, you know, I was working at a corporate company. I wasn't happy, you know, so I was making really good money and I was on the path to being successful, but I wasn't really, you know, happy on the inside. So, um, you know, I went on a climbing trip and I just started to journal and, and read and um started to get in touch with myself and you know I realized I didn't want to be the person that I was before I left mm -hmm. so I just came to the conclusion that in order for me to do something um, you know different I had to do the complete opposite of what I was doing you know so maybe you know try to be more open and, and share mm -hmm. my feelings more you know and, and not worry about my ego and, yeah. and how I look to other people so I kind of just experienced with that more and, and started to share who I was with friends and they started to open it up to me and that kind of paved way for the What I Be project. You know, after shooting so much concert photography, which I love doing, I wanted to do more with my work. I wanted to kind of make a difference and, um, you know, I was like, well, maybe if I somehow took pictures of people expressing themselves and, and really sharing something about themselves that they wouldn't normally share, would it open up communication within, you know, their network of friends, family, different things like that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how the project Initiated, came to yeah. be. Yeah. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one day I was sat down with my friend Amanda and mm -hmm. we kind of um, dove in <laughs> unexpectedly and we ended up with, you know, the image that says thunder thighs on it. Yeah. That was kind of the first image that... That started it all. Yeah, in 2010. 2010, mm -hmm. wow. It's been already like five years, you know? Almost, yeah, oh, yeah. almost five years. 
Mm -hmm. So do you continue to do photos for the same project or yep. requests? Um, yep, I, I travel around the country and um, it's really big in universities and colleges and different things like that, um, mm -hmm. you know, festivals and um, events. But every year I just uh, travel around to different colleges and schools. And, and how do people reach out to you? Like what is the easiest way to do that? Um, the best way is, you know, right off my website, you can, yeah. you know, email me. But a lot of groups, whether it's uh, Active Minds or LGBTQ um, group within a school, um, or student activities, mm -hmm. they reach out to me and we kind of plan um, a visit to their school. That is pretty cool. Yeah. You know. yeah. So we have like a video to show right now about the project that he's been talking about. So can we first display the first video? And yeah. Six years old is when you should be learning to read, jumping rope at recess, and your worst problem is who you should invite to your birthday party. Six years old is how old I was the first time I was molested. He called himself the man. He never gave me bruises, but instead gave me money, toys, and made me laugh. He went out of his way to be friendly to everyone. He kept me home from school, made me watch porn, and did things to me I don't care to relive. He touched and violated me. These recurring events were so frequent, I am unable to tell you how many times it happened. I had to repeat the fourth grade because of how much school I had missed. Looking back, it's not surprising teachers always said I had behavioral issues and trouble focusing. At nine, my unknowing mother was engaged to the man and he lived with us for two more years. As I matured, the abuse lessened and at 11, it ultimately stopped. At 17, I finally told the truth to my parents about what had happened to me. It was not easy, but I couldn't hold it in anymore. My parents went to the police. The police contacted him and he shot himself in the head. He took what healing process I could have had in confronting him. He took my childhood. He took my innocence. Because of what he did, I've dealt with depression, anxiety, and a distorted sense of tactile perception. I have darkness in my story, but I have chosen to rise above it. I will never be able to forget my past, and I know I'm not alone, and I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. I am alive, I am strong, and today, I am not my invasion. Now, if you ask me, this was a very powerful story. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what went on? Like, how do you get them to talk about it? Because it must be challenging to talk about something that you've been, you know, keeping to yourself and, you know, hiding, so. How do you get these individuals to go about sharing their story? Um, I mean, everybody who comes in to talk to me is coming in to me for a reason. You know, mm -hmm. they want to express themselves. They want to just share their story. Um, and basically, I just have a conversation with them. You know, I'm listening. I'm sharing things that go on with me. And um, I think it's just, you know, two people having a conversation with no judgments and, and an mm -hmm. open conversation about honesty. It's, I think that's what we all crave. So it's not... It's not that difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have a couple of pictures that we want to display about the project. And, you know, these are the behind the scenes in where, can you describe the process of what happens during those, you know, sessions? For sure. Um, you know, basically I take, um, I have 45 minute sessions and, mm -hmm. you know, for the first 40 minutes, um, you know, we talk about their insecurity in, in, you know, different words that, um, you know, kind of resonate with them mm -hmm. regarding their insecurity. And then, um, you know, two to five minutes of that process is, you know, writing their insecurity, you know, on their skin, depending on how they want to pose and, and then uh, taking the picture and, mm -hmm. you know, 
seeing which image they like, if they like the image, or if they want to do it over. Or, yeah. yeah. Have you done a video for every picture that you've created, or? I haven't. Mm -hmm. um, I've done probably about eight, eight videos. videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I only do the videos if it's, um, you know, if the person's around, or, yeah. or if I'm capable of doing it, if I have the, the equipment. Yeah, if it's um, accessible. Yeah. yeah. Okay, makes sense. And can you tell us about, you know, do they pick what is going to be written on their face, or? Yeah, I mean, work? we basically talk about it over the, you know, our session. Mm -hmm. uh, but all those words that we write on them are all words that they say. You know, I go through and I write everything down that we talk about, and then, you know, uh, the both of us, we, we basically go through, um, you know, the words, and whatever one resonates the most with them is the ones that we choose to, to write on them. Yeah. And do all, you said these vary from, like, universities, uh, different cities, and Yeah, uh, you know, ages. to celebrities. Yeah. You know, we had, uh, we just had, um, you know, that's Eric from Revolution, the band, and we just mm -hmm. had, um, you know, Jackie Cruz, who plays Flocka on Orange is the New Black, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, who you showed a minute ago. Yeah. But yeah, so it's, uh, you know, f some celebrities to uh, college students to, you know, people of all ages. Yeah. Pretty incredible. <laughs> I like that, you know, like I said before, it's really difficult to find images online that encourage, you know, self, like loving yourself for who you are and whether you have all these flaws or not, you know. That's yeah, I mean, we, we I all... We're yeah. all flawed in our own yeah. way, you know, and I think it's just being comfortable and, and sharing them, yeah. what's sure. there for you and know that we all struggle from something and mm -hmm. you'd be surprised at, you know, what the person next to you is struggling from. Yeah. So would you, what advice would you give to parents or, you know, teenagers who are going through any of these um, insecurities or, you know, problems? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the best way to, to deal with them is to talk about them, you know, mm -hmm. um, share them with your friends and, and, you know, even your family or, you know, somehow put it out there and, and you'll notice that your friends and family will feel safe to share with you as well. Mm -hmm. And since we are in, you know, located in Davis, where the UC Davis community is at, the University of California, Davis, um, I would like to say, what would you encourage, you know, like, advice for students who are pursuing photography or film, you know, f that tend to be like, sometimes it's discouraging because, you know, it's a lot of competition or a lot of things that are said to you. So what advice do you give to them? Um, I just, it's just like any field, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think there's competition in everything. Um, I think the, you know, the best advice is to just keep doing it. You to know, you if like. you believe in it and you're passionate about it, just keep doing it. You know, I did the project for three years without getting paid or, mm -hmm. or anything, and it was just something that I believed in. And, and if you believe in what you're doing, just keep doing it. You know, it's not so much about the money. And obviously, you have to <laughs> live and survive, yeah. you know. Um, but you can do other things to make money. So you can just yeah. do what you love to do. And so as long as you're passionate and it's something that you really want to do. Totally. Yeah, just keep out. doing it. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to necessarily go to school for it. You know, a lot of things you do have to go to school for, but... I think, um, you know, photography and videography, a lot of it you can teach yourself. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, just keep, keep taking pictures and doing video and... Yeah. yeah. So I heard that there was a book coming out or... There is. Is it already out? I don't know. It's not it's out been yet. It. Yeah. Um, we have uh, meetings with publishers next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm thinking December it'll be. It should be, it should be out ready. by December, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. and can you give us like a little hint of like what's going to be inside of it or, you know? Um, the hint will be every picture will be in it. Every picture? In wow. some way, <laughs> shape, or form. Not yeah. They won't all be highlighted, but every picture will be in the book. Yeah, yeah. and have you taken a picture? You know, My picture will be in the book. It will, it be, in will be in the back of the book for the about the author section. Okay, cool. So that's my big reveal because mm -hmm. I haven't put my picture out yet, so. So that's like the teaser. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So yeah. any other future projects coming up or anything that you would want to talk about? Um, no. I mean, I have a couple of the projects that, um, you know, will be released um, sooner or later yeah. when the time is right. But, um, you know, obviously those are under mm -hmm. wraps for now. But, um, yeah, you know, I'm just still creating with the What I Be project and, mm -hmm. um, you know, working with 
trying to get into galleries and, and museums and different things like that and yeah. just spread it. That would be spread really it well. more. Yeah. yeah. I think it will, it will spread. So yeah. we have another video that is about the What IB project. So I hope you enjoy it. You look like you could kill a person. That's what she said. Not you look pensive. Maybe I was pondering the infinite combinations of peanut butter and anything. Quantum physics. No, I was mean. A possible killer. I wanted to talk to her. I liked her, but she left. Her friend said that I really scared her. Thing was, I did nothing. It was just my face and quiet way that was misconstrued for mean. Old people look at me and cross the street. I took a good whooping from three boys once because they were throwing rocks at an old lady and I stopped them. I'm the good guy, but no white hat neutralizes my mean look. I've had my own family say I look mean. I am not mean, I'm quiet. In high school I was the one who mediated and stopped fights. I stood up for others one too many times and paid the price. And today I still would. It's a problem of mine to stand up for what's right. But most don't know that because they can't get past the fact that I don't always smile. My dad doesn't smile. My brother doesn't. I'm gonna call it a family tradition. It's at least genetics. I could fake a smile, but nothing looks cheesier than a fake smile. Fake smiles are for car salesmen and much too pretentious. I'm not mean, I'm just quiet and shy. I hope someday someone comes up and asks, why are you so pensive? You know, as I see these videos, I I'm glad to see that it's, you know, everyday people from like, you could relate to some of these stories as you look, you know, through your website and the pictures that are online. So that's something that I really enjoyed while. So I definitely encourage everyone to, you know, look him up and the website. Uh, so I want to ask you now, where do you see yourself in five years or in 10 years from mm. now? You know, are you still like adventures, rock climbing, pictures or? Um. I mean, I don't know. I never really understood that question, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> five years is a long time, but yeah. I'd like to still uh, be taking pictures and telling stories, whether it's a new project or the What I Be project. I, I think I'll always be involved in What I Be um, mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form, uh, just because I really believe in it, um, whether it's, you know, here or, you know, overseas or, yeah. um, you know, five years have gone by so quickly, uh, you know, the past five years, so... Um, yeah, I just, I'd like to be taking pictures and still traveling and, mm -hmm. yeah, doing what I love. So I noticed that the backgrounds for, like, the pictures and, you know, the videos are, like, black and white. Is there a specific reason why you selected, you know, that color? Is yeah, I mean, I just chose a plain white background. Um, I didn't want anything to take away from the person's eyes and the message that they were trying to convey mm -hmm. you know if it was outside if there was you know cars or trees or you know different things if they held props up it it would just take away from you know their message and, and it's all about the eyes so mm. I didn't want to take away from that yeah yeah because they say that the eyes are like you know the pathway to your soul or mm -hmm. something like that yeah. totally okay well if you would like to know more information about Steve Rosenfield or you know see his work or contact him you could visit his website which will be display on screen and if you would also like to follow him, there's information on social media accounts on his website as well. This has been Jocelyn Lua with Steve Rosenfield. Thank you for watching in the studio.